Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. To avoid a mutiny on my Facebook page, I'm making a post-fight Keith Thurman, Diego Chavez video, right? But I want to be blunt with everyone here, right? I did not see the fight live. When I had the fight playing in the background, shortly after the fight took place, I made a few notes to myself. It looked to me like Thurman was getting hit early, right? Um, looked to me like Thurman was moving very well later in the fight. But I thought I'd be able to actually sit down and look at the fight again, right? I had company fight was on in the background, wasn't really paying close attention to it. Now, apparently online, the copyright holders of the fight apparently succeeded in getting most of the online copies of the fight removed. So I have not had an opportunity to actually sit down and watch key portions of the fight like I like to do, right? Let me also say something else too. You know, I'm really here trying to get an edge on the casino, right? My angle's really a gambling angle. I know it sounds like, you know, I'm talking boxing, but I'm really talking gambling. <laughs> and here, Keith Thurman was a greater than three to one favorite, which in my opinion was a bit rich. The risk reward just wasn't there for me in this fight. Right. And so as a result, as exciting as the fight was, and it was very exciting. Right. I did not bet on the fight, nor did I give the fight the kind of high priority that I would give a fight in which I think there's going to be an upset. So with that in mind, with the nod to Hatman and the others on my Facebook page, let me just tell you what I saw and what I think could trip Keith Thurman up down the road. Keith Thurman is a guy who really is a bit of a hooker, right? His punches, to me, come from outside. He doesn't have too much of a bad loop on the punches, but he's not what I call a straight puncher, right? He doesn't come up to you and then riddle you with very straight punches, which tend to be faster than hooks. Rather, Thurman's a guy who needs a little space between himself and the opponent so he can literally extend his arms a little bit. Right now here, Thurman was much more mobile than Diego Chavez. Let me point out, too, that Thurman is one of the most serious contenders, in my opinion, at 147 pounds because of his mobility. I was very impressed with Thurman in the fight before this one when he fought John Zavek, right? So Thurman has a gift where he doesn't have to stand in front of you and trade, right? In other words, he was in against a puncher like him, a guy who likes to throw hooks. But Thurman had the advantage because Thurman could actually create distance between the two of them. Chavez struck me as a guy who could only operate from mid-range in. Keith Thurman, knowing that, was able to stay outside. Thurman's also a complex fighter. In other words, when Thurman starts to throw that left hand, you don't know if he's coming up top with it or if he's going to hit you in the ribs. Right? Let me tell you a fight I'd love to see. Adrian Broner who fought Paulie Malignaggi at 147 against Keith Thurman. Because understand, in my opinion, Adrian Broner's foot base is a bit wide and Broner doesn't move that well. Keith Thurman does. Keith Thurman can also move backing up. And he's cat quick with very heavy hands. He knows how to shift his weight when he sees an opening. I think that fight would be interesting for a host of levels, right? I believe Keith Thurman is better on the outside. Obviously, Adrian Broner is a master 
inside, right? The spacing in that fight would determine a lot about what happens in that fight. Here, I thought Diego Chavez was overmatched. After Thurman was a bit too ambitious early and gets hit a bit with some right hands, Thurman seemed to change course, moved around a little bit better, right? Thurman actually is a moving big puncher. He moves around a little bit better, and Chavez obviously could not keep up. He, he keeps having Chavez reset, right? Chavez couldn't plant his feet. He had to always reset. And Thurman, of course, is just quicker in terms of moving to a spot and getting off punches. How do you beat Keith Thurman, in my opinion? You have to be more mobile foot speed wise than Diego Chavez. And I believe you have to smother it. In other words, guys who throw punches with a little bit of a loop, you have to get inside on mid-range hookers, right? Not give them a chance to extend, right? It's also very important that you corner Keith Thurman because a lot of Keith's effectiveness comes from not knowing when Thurman is going to jump inside with explosive punches, right? So you really have to fight Thurman like he's an ambush fighter, in my opinion right? Put another way, let's compare Thurman to David Hay for a second, right? What I'm going to say is a little controversial, but David Hay throws straight punches, right? For everything that David Hay does, hold on, for everything that David Hay does, when David Hay is outside, He's able to throw very straight punches. That changes the dynamic. Keep in mind, he can mix it with hooks. I believe Thurman's best shots are the hooks, right? And so, in my opinion, a guy who can get his hands up and come in low, because you need to protect your head and your body, a guy who could fight a Mike Tyson style, right? Come in low, have a hand up, bob and weave. Be hard for Thurman to time. Might be able to pin Thurman up on the ropes and unload on him inside Thurman's power zone because Thurman needs to extend his arms. Right? That Mike Tyson, Joe Fraser type fighter would give him a hard time. It'd be interesting, quite frankly, to see Thurman against Victor Ortiz. If Ortiz shakes off the rust, right, because he's been out of the ring for a while, and comes in trying to bull his way in like he did against Floyd Mayweather. That didn't work against Mayweather because Mayweather wants you to bull him. But I believe that style would discombobulate Keith Thurman, right? Diego Chavez simply didn't have the foot speed to pull it off. I'm not sure if Adrian Broner does either, right? So look at Keith Thurman, big time puncher. I actually think that he's a guy you need to reckon with, right? Because I believe that Thurman moves exceptionally well for a guy who's really a big time knockout puncher right it's just that Thurman doesn't want to smother you he would rather operate at mid-range and long range right and so to me that creates an opening for a guy who like Mike Tyson would be able to get inside and operate from up close right in the middle of Thurman's tornado. Just one man's opinion. Let me hear yours. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us, gamblersadvisory.com. Let me say one other thing too. Omar Figueroa 
in my opinion, he kind of has the same problem. He doesn't move as well as Keith Thurman, right? Thurman actually moves better than Omar Figueroa. But did you notice in that Figueroa fight that Figueroa's punches have a loop? He's a hooker, right? Figueroa is not a guy who comes right down the middle. So he knocked this guy down. He knocked his opponent down multiple times. The opponent was hurt multiple times. But then that opponent was able to get inside Figueroa's tornado, right? In other words, all the power is coming from the outside, let's say maybe about two and a half feet in front of Figueroa. If you can get up close on Omar Figueroa, right, you can actually defuse him. Because mid-range hookers want it at mid-range. They don't want it at close range. And Figueroa, in my opinion, would have had a problem against the guy at long range. And so these guys look offensively explosive. But I believe opponents who can throw straight punches, who know how to fight inside, can literally position themselves to take away major parts of the games of Keith Thurman and Omar Figueroa, right? Both guys won their fights. I prefer Thurman to Omar Figueroa, right? Because Figueroa took a lot of punishment, right? The problem with punchers, especially punchers who don't move that well, is that they believe too much in their punching ability, and when they get to the contender and championship level. They're dealing with opponents who know how to hit them back. Take a look at Omar Figueroa's face. That guy had gone through a war. You need to consider this fight to be a grueling fight on par with the beating that Timothy Bradley took from Ruslan Povotnikov. In other words, I know Figueroa wasn't knocked out in the fight. Figueroa won the fight. Right? He wasn't knocked down like Timothy Bradley. But he got beaten up because he also doesn't have the defensive skills up close. Right, He couldn't hide his head. He doesn't bend at the waist. You understand what I'm saying. His style works at mid-range, but he's a target. So a guy could literally get up on him change the angle a little bit, not be in front of him, but be off at the side. And Figueroa is going to have a problem dealing with that guy if Figueroa can't extend his arms, right? Keith Thurman's a little bit more complicated because Thurman moves so well that getting up on him is a challenge, right? Take a look at how front foot heavy Zavek is in the fight before this one against Thurman. Right? In fact, take a look at how front foot heavy Diego Chavez is in this fight. And all I can say is, you know, very hard time tracking down Thurman. Let me also point out, too, the body punches that dropped Chavez were brilliant. You need to understand how hard that is to pull off because Thurman is a few feet away from him. But Thurman just like Amir Khan against Marcus Maidana is so cat quick that he could literally just dip a shoulder, come in, and throw the punch right under Chavez's elbow. Have it be accurate, still be balanced, and able to back back out. Right? Thurman is a devastating body puncher. That's something to consider, especially when he might move too fast for someone like Adrian Broner to stay in his comfort zone. If you have to move faster than you'd like to catch up with Keith Thurman, and if your defense starts to fall apart, just know that Thurman can stop on a dime, drop a shoulder, and throw a withering liver shot or kidney shot on you, the kind that dropped Chavez 
in this fight. Anyway, let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Uh, by the way, when I say online, let's make it YouTube and not Facebook. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Uh, to the Facebook crowd, go ahead and leave me messages. I don't mind. I was just surprised that this Thurman fight, where he was a 3-1 to one favorite, has generated this kind of interest online. This is a learning experience for me. Thanks for stopping by.